1947, I had just graduated from Tyler High School. I'd been in the band four years under Doc Witt. And I got a call one afternoon from Dr. Ed Potter, who was the dean of Tyler Junior College. He told me that Doc Witt had been hired by Tyler Junior College to come over from Tyler High School. And uh, it turned out that uh, I was going to be given a two-year scholarship in return for a two-year participation on my part to start with recruiting band members. We had no one on the band. There was a, an idea of no people. There were a lot of young men coming back from service who had been in bands before, and uh, they wanted to uh, take part in it. And some of them were actually st students in the, in the school. So uh, it was a pretty good mixture. Rich in background, but everyone had a common purpose. They loved music. They loved me in a band, and it's a win-win for all of us. has put on concerts like tonight. They've entertained people from around the entire world. They've brought them to Thailand to entertain them, and they've gone around the world to entertain them. We are so thankful that we get to entertain you this evening. You're in for a lot of real treats this evening, okay? I am so excited for you to get to hear uh, what these students have put together for you guys. We're going to walk you through some of the Apache Band history today. Uh, you saw this great video started out talking about Doc Witt, um, our great friend, our great benefactor, Harold Beard, uh, who was in the original band, that was him at the end there in the Golden Bay with the cowboy hat. For some reason, the students are asking to bring it back, but they must be tired. It's finals time. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just so excited for you guys to get to see some of the history that's going to be on this stage here tonight. 
Uh, some of the history that's going to be on these videos. We could not be here doing this today. For those of you who are parents and family members of students on this stage or students who performed earlier this week, we would not be doing what we're doing here today if it weren't for those people who decided 75 years ago that having a, a band program at TJC was something that needed to happen here in Tyler. And we're so very grateful that they did. I do want to quickly just say thank you everyone for being here. Um, like I said, you're in for a real treat. At the end of the night tonight, we're going to party. We're going to have a great time uh, over in the newly renovated Ornella Center for the band, the Apache Bells and Dance. Uh, there's a huge reception that's going to happen. There's cookies, there's t-shirts, there's food everywhere. So we're all going to leave here together. At the end, don't try to leave early. You don't want to miss the ending. And then we're going to go enjoy that reception together. Like I told you, we're going to walk a little bit down memory lane. I'm going to let them fly. Oh, the screen's already flown in. Look at that. All right. So and let's uh, just enjoy some more stories from alums as we uh, continue on the journey through the last 75 years. He was the music man, he was the guy. My dad had been at the school for quite a while, and Al Gillum and all the people that they brought in to do the bells and the band and everything else. The famous Apache Cowboy, the bells of the Tyler Texas Junior College, step around quickly on this cool, clear, hard morning. <laughs>
a musician of music. He was a professional working musician. He was an old enough guy who had been around, who, you know, was a strong leader but with a light touch. I know when we went to the Super Bowl, for many of them, the first time out in the state of Texas, and, and somehow he managed to herd all those cats and, and get everybody where they needed to be on time. And, 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 and man, we were good. This is where this break I just remember that he was straight up and honest, and my fun other guy. Mr. Jordan really put the drum line uh, up front as a showstopper group, so he gave us a lot of latitude. Everybody knows how wonderful we got to do more than any community college ever thought about doing. We uh, performed in uh, Washington, D.C. three times. We did a couple of Dallas Cowboy games every year. We played for the Houston the Rockets and the Spurs. And we got to go to France. But during the carnival, we stayed in these and performed in Cannes, Monaco, Monte Carlo, Glass. It was a wonderful experience for our kids. The band members keep asking me when they get to go to Paris. I keep saying, <laughs> tomorrow. Always tomorrow. Dances are always tomorrow. One of my favorite uh, quotes that Billy Hibbs, who's just a wonderful friend of TJC and a wonderful friend of our program, um, says on there, he's like, you know, he's just rounding everybody up and he's putting everybody together. And I'm looking at the bells on the 50 yard line and the Apache band in the, in the, at the Super Bowl. And I'm thinking to myself, there had to be at least a thousand people helping them corral all those cats because I've kind of corralled these people for a concert before. And um, it takes a village. Let's just put it that way. So um, one of the things that um, I'm very um, proud of, we're also very blessed here at TJC, is that village. Uh, when I get asked all the time, how are you guys able to do what you do at TJC, I point to two things. I point to strong leadership from our administration, our board of trustees, which we'll talk more about later, and I point to the colleagues that I get to work with. I get to work alongside people who can literally be teaching and performing anywhere in the United States, but they choose to be here at Tyler Junior College because they believe in the mission of the institution, but also in what we do here with the band program. Tonight, you're going to get to experience some of that performing um, firsthand, and just, just be ready because, wow, okay? Uh, I'm very excited to welcome to the stage uh, our professor of tuba and euphonium, along with our conductor, Dr. Eddie Earhart. Please welcome Dr. Danny Shepard.
75 years, undefeated in the halftime show for 75 years. And that's something that only Tyler Junior College can brag about. Uh, I arrived in, in July of 2003, and uh, Tom McGowan uh, had worked really, really hard to increase enrollment, and I walked in to a band from 35 the year before to over 120. as uh, one of our assistant directors, uh, Heather Bench, who's not a part of the chair, which is here. Um, and uh, just an incredible time of growth and just a tremendous amount of fun. We were sending us to Europe, and we went to Vienna and uh, um, Hollywood, Germany. At the 
kind of to form the troops there, and then uh, got a chance to be in Austria as well as part of that, and another phenomenal trip like that. And so the trips were just obviously really good for our, 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 our recruiting, but also um, just great memories. The kids that I had in the future was fantastic, you know, and, and seeing their careers. Um, some of them have gone on to music, music either as band directors or other aspects of that. Um, but it's just been uh, a true, it was just a tremendous experience being uh, the student of the program during that time. Wow, such rich history. Again, with the traveling. Uh, we, I mean, maybe we should have screened those videos a little more. Um, <laughs> we, I, I, I got asked this after we showed the videos to the students today, and several of them said, you know, how come we don't get to play the Super Bowl? Well, well marching bands don't play the Super Bowl. Well, how come we don't play the Cowboys halftimes anymore? Well, because marching bands don't play a lot of Cowboys halftimes. Well, how come we don't travel anymore? Because it's expensive. But we will eventually again get back to that. Um, I want to um, just take this time right now to just reiterate and um, make sure that we take time to recognize that the team effort of everything that you're seeing tonight, that you see with the marching band, um, I love Dr. Mejia's quote, undefeated since 1947. That's his quote, not mine, but we'll run with it. Um, and that's because of a total team effort. So I wanted to recognize these people and make sure that we give them the applause. Uh, Dr. Eddie Earhart, our assistant director of bands, professor of woodwinds, Mr. Michael Bell, our professor of trumpet and taking care of our jazz ensembles, Mr. McGowan, our director of percussion stu uh, studies, Dr. Chapa, who you just saw, our professor of uh, tuba and euphonium, Ms. Heather Mitch uh, teaches our trombone and is also our department chair, as well as Ms. Julie, who holds the place together and makes everything run, and of course, Jenna Hamill, who takes care of Touch of Gold. Can you please recognize all those people today? <laughs> And it's um, a real joy to get to come to work and to spend time around not just colleagues and amazing musicians, but with friends that we get to do life together, that we get to do band together. Uh, and it's just a real blessing to be a part of that group. When we moved here to East Texas uh, almost 10 years ago, I was welcomed in by uh, many East Texas band directors who were very uh, kind and gracious to kind of show me the ropes. A lot of them had to teach me how military marching band works. Still don't know, have a cheat sheet, we'll figure it out eventually. Um, one of those uh, gentlemen, uh, you've already actually seen a, a video of him earlier tonight. Uh, Gary George is the director of bands at uh, Bullard uh, High School. And uh, he was the director of bands here at TJC from 1986 to 1993, and it's our pleasure to welcome him to the podium. Please welcome Mr. Gary Jordan.
talk about 75 years of tradition. I mean, we want to, we want to entertain people. That's one of our, uh, what's one of the things that we're here to do is to entertain people. The Apache Band has been able to, through the years, evolve in a way that's necessary to stay at the forefront of what is going on in the band world. We have 13 other ensembles that exist year round that perform on campus, that perform the public, whatever. We have our concert bands, our wind ensemble, our indoor drum line, steel drum band, jazz bands, all of these programs in their own right award them. Our drum line was national championships at the Winter Guard International Competition in 2010. Our jazz has won best jazz band in East Texas multiple times. In 2018, uh, we took the Apache Marching Band down to San Antonio. We marched in the Alamo Dome at the uh, UIL State Marching Band Championships. It was the very first time that that group had performed in that environment. I think I'll know most about his passion for marching band. It, it really exudes out of him when he's up on the, uh, up on the tower or when he's talking to us. He genuinely loves his job. He genuinely loves teaching the scene. And that's, that's something I don't think I'll forget. For 35 years, the Apache Band and the Apache Bells have waited for a facility that finally existed at the level that we perform on the field when we perform in the community. And we're in a, a, a facility now. It is going to rival many four-year university programs and what they have, and it is going to truly give our students the experience that they deserve to come be in these programs. We want to get bigger, we want to get better, we want to give more students a chance to go to college. We want to perform in venues and in um, arenas and places that we've never been before. My personal goal for the Apache Band is that no matter what the opportunity is, no matter what comes our way, the Apache Band will be ready.
to our uh, alumni uh, relations office director. I can never get her title right, it doesn't matter. Her name is Susan Farrington, she's awesome. She runs all sorts of um, events for us at TBA. She throws on the, the best reception for colleges and universities at TBA for us, uh, for our alumni to be able to come back. Um, she's the one who put together with her team uh, the reception that you're all going to go and enjoy after this. Um, so let's talk with Susan Farrington. Thank you for everything you can do. I tell people when they call and ask, how do you guys do what you do at TJC? I say, well, you gotta get you a TJ, you gotta get yourself a college president who was drum major of his high school band. If you can do that, then everything else just kind of falls into place. Our uh, president at, at, at TJC is a, a fan of our students. Um, he's a consummate gentleman. He is a big fan, a big supporter. Uh, and we would not be able to do anything that we do within the band program without his leadership that trickles down to everybody else that I just mentioned. So please thank Dr. Juan Medea. Thank you. as um, when we finish uh, the symphony number four in about four hours, that will be um, the last um, performance for many of our sophomores that are sitting on this stage. Um, they're transferring, they're graduating, they're leaving us, um, and we're okay with that. Eventually they do have to leave. Um, we kind of have to kick them out the door sometimes, and that's okay. I mean, this is a very special group. Uh, this group of sophomores here, um, they were the first junior college group to ever get to perform at TBA. They spent last summer, that's all right, we can celebrate that. We're still celebrating. invited to get to go down and perform at the Texas Band Masters Association Convention back in San Antonio, everything's in San Antonio, um, in July. And just these last few weeks, as many of you know, they are the first junior college ever to be invited to perform at the Midwest International Band Orchestra Clinic in Chicago in the 77 year history of the first junior college. accepted at Midwest. It was um, very humbling and very exciting and quite a bit already nervous uh, to pull up the website this week and see two colleges listed and we're one of the two listed that got to get to perform at Midwest. So we're incredibly proud of them. Again, their leadership, their ability, the legacy that they're leaving behind is just, it's second to none. So if you're a sophomore and this is going to be your last performance with us, go ahead and stand up and let us recognize you appropriately. is a um, powerhouse piece that exists in the band medium. Um, in the band world, it is our Beethoven's fifth. Um, it is our Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker, okay? In the band world, it is a top 10 piece that you hope to ever get a chance to hear live, you hope to ever, ever get a chance to perform. And for us to be sitting on the stage about to perform David Maslanka's Symphony Number 4 for you is a real experience for us. The, the, the program notes are there. If you want to read them, go ahead. You'll probably get three or four times through them in the next, um, what are we up to, six hours now? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a real treat to be able to stand in front of this quality musician to get to play a piece that's 30 years old, that stands the test of time. So much band literature that gets put out these days. We won't be paying 30 years from now. We will still be playing David Maslanka's Symphony Number 4. The program notes are there. It's based mostly on the doxology hymn. You can see the text there, I mean, the logo for the poster. Um, we just encourage you guys to sit back and enjoy. You're going to hear a lot of different sounds. You're going to hear a lot of different things. But at the very core of what you're going to hear is you're going to hear 75 years of legacy that exists in these students right now coming out of the musicianship that they were putting on the stage. And as they set, continue to set the standard for what the TJC band is capable of in the future. David was like this simply number four.